something for the sake of um, yesterday's um, summer performance. Um, that first 20 minutes was one of the best collective searching for truth, <laughs> um, for the truth of a matter that I have seen performed by any class since, I don't know, for several years. And you're eighth graders. Not only were you incredibly efficient about setting up and getting everything ready um, with the least possible fuss, but once you started talking, you were um, not only very courteous to each other and listening to each other, responding to each other's arguments, referring to each other's arguments, which is often something that you, it's very hard for people to do. They just want to make their own argument instead of saying, well, in response to what Sarah said, you were doing that extremely well. The other thing that was incredibly impressive, and I told Mr. Rudd the other day on the phone, I said, I don't know if anybody will believe me if I tell them this. But I had eighth graders in here, not only quoting their text, the Handle the Baskervilles, but quoting scripture, quoting the Catechism of the Catholic Church, quoting various uh, sources for definitions, um, good learned sources, quoting federal statutes about <coughs> being an accomplice, the problems of being an accomplice to a crime by hiding the criminal, quoting federal statutes and quoting the philosopher Spinoza. I said, I simply don't know whether anyone who wasn't there will believe me. But I want to testify to this um, today. I want to thank you, and I hope that today's seminar is as um, good as yesterday's. Okay, <clears throat> let's begin. The question is, uh, the question is, to what extent is Beryl Stapleton culpable of the murder of Sir, Sir Charles Selden and the other crimes of her husband? Is it ever right to conceal knowledge of crime? Well, first of all, uh, the murder of Selden was his own fault. Uh, he chose to wear Sir Hen Henry's attire, and he died because of it. Barrymore, but Barrymore gave him the clothes, so it wouldn't be Beryl's, uh, it wouldn't be Beryl's fault in any sense. But if the criminal is willing to, to so maybe she didn't um, tell anyone because she was afraid of her own life, but that, in a way that was sort of selfish because uh, her husband, he could have killed so many other people, and you're supposed to lay your, your life down for other people. That's what the right thing is to do. And so, yeah, she was, he had manipulated her and everything, but, um, she would, yeah, she was brainwashed, but, um, yeah, you should spare your life for the other person. I think it was sort of selfish of her not telling Sir Henry and Watson, more about it. Like she wrote the letter, but she could have done more to well, prevent. I think, I think the she, yeah, like them. Yeah. I think she was living in fear because she says, "Oh, this villain! See how he has treated me." She shot her arms out of her sleeves, and we saw with horror. They were mult. They were multiple bruises. But this is nothing. Nothing. It is my mind and soul that he has tortured through the file. So I think like she didn't really tell him because she was out because she was out of fear. But I don't think she was really brainwashed. Yes, well, but it says in the book that Sir Henry's falling in love could do no harm to anyone but Sir Henry. She should have at least no. told him that that she, she was. She did tell him like like the danger on the moor in that letter, but I think that all the times that she was with Sir Henry alone, she could have told him more. Yeah, yeah, yeah she said yeah. like I have, I had um he says um Watson speaking. I've had the uh, advantage of two conversations with Mrs. Stapleton, um, Miss Stapleton, and the case has now been entirely cleared up. I am not aware that, that um, there is anything which has been remained a secret to us. She said everything after her husband died, which kind of proves Chris's point of saying that um, she was she was forced into like she couldn't say like 
everything she said was after her husband's death. But which, yeah. but she didn't she didn't know that he was dead at the time. He had escaped after he led the hound on Sir Henry, and she nobody knew she was dead. So on page two twenty three, this so Holmes asks her, "If you have ever aided in him in evil, help us now and so atone." There's one, and then she answers, "Well, there's one place where he could have fled." She tells them the location where he could be, and but she doesn't know he's dead yet. So she just knows the game's up. I think that I think that he's trying to stay is. Um, she, but he, she knows the game's up for Stapleton. She's like, he might as well be dead or in jail. But it's like there's nothing, there's nothing Stapleton can do to like, harm her again. I think she wanted Stapleton to be gone. She was afraid of her husband, but she also kind of loved him too. She didn't want to turn him in herself. But she was really relieved when she found out that he might actually be dead because she didn't want to turn against her own kin, but she didn't want Stapleton to do the bad things. Uh, and I think it's going back to what you said about her loving him. <coughs> well, sir, finish. Yeah. Okay. Well, going back to you saying that she loved him, I think that was um, probably the main reason why she did all of this. And in fact, I think that the reason she turned against him at the end of the book was because they were having an argument when she realized that the hound, the night that Selden died, it was supposed to be Sir Henry. So they had an argument, and on page 241, Holmes says, a furious scene then followed in which he showed for her for the first time that she had a rival for his love, which was Laura Lyons, who he had been having sort of an affair with. So I think that she was doing it mostly out of love because she was clinging on to the very fact that he still loved her. But when he showed that there was someone else who could possibly replace her love, that I think that's really what made her turn against him, not really fear. I think if Stapleton tied up his wife and beat her once, he could have done it more than once, which could have frightened her. Because it says in, on page 235, he distrusted his wife ever since she had refused to help him in laying a trap for the old man. And he dared not leave her long out of his sight for fear he should lose his influence over her. So it says influence, which means she's she's frightened of him. And she thinks that if he leaves her alone for a second, that she won't be frightened anymore. It's like a woman with an abusive husband that she loved previously. Uh, she has fond memories of him in the past, but what he does now, she just can't forgive. Yeah, like for example, it says, as her beautiful face fell upon her chest, I saw a clear red wheel of whiplash across her neck. Like, yeah, like that's just scary. Yeah, I feel like Andrew or Eddie should say something. Well, well, going, Emma, what Emma was saying goes even a quote to back that says, cling to the hope of his love, but now I know in this also I have been his deep and his cruel so Maybe it, she's not guilty because she was, yeah, she was clinging to his love and she didn't realize what she was doing. Well, I think actually, I think that Maria and Ryan were also correct because on 235 she said she had such a fear of her husband that she dared not write to warn him, to warn Watson and Holmes. So this says that she was also very afraid of him. But on page 240, she was ready to warn Sir Henry so far as she could without implicating her husband. And again and again she tried to do so. There had to be some sort of love to keep her from implicating him, even though he had beaten her. Mm -hmm. And it also says, uh, she says, I could endure it. All ill usage, sol solitude, a life of deception, everything, as long as I could still cl cling to hope of that love. It sounds like she's kind of putting her love before Sir Henry's <coughs> victim. Like, it, yeah. she really is. She's putting her love for this man in front of all the people that he's he's hurt yeah, in the past, the Virgolays, and the people that he will hurt in the future. Which is why she turned on him when she realized that there was someone else who could replace her if she doesn't follow through with what he's but telling her she could have done that sooner. She had all those times, like, yeah, with she, Sir Henry she alone, when so Sir Henry tried to, like, propose to her or whatever. She could have easily told Sir Henry then... But I think she would feel like she was betraying Stapleton then. Yeah, there. but Stapleton was like a monster. He's mm -hmm. killed so many people. Yeah, I know, but when you know someone, like, so, per she knows, like, she's been, like, to throw much with her, with him, and, like, they're, um, they're so close to, like, and to, like, just betray that person is, like, really hard, probably, for Mr. Stapleton. Even though he is a monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But she doesn't see the monster, obviously, because she she, she loved him through, like, but her whipping. She would, <laughs> <laughs> she would have had to see the monster if he's abused her, though. Well, it shows, well, there's signs, though, that show that he might have still loved her. Like, when it says, when um, two, page 240, Holmes says, And when he saw the baronet playing court to the lady, even though it was part of his own plan, he still could not help interrupting with a passionate outburst because of his own jealousy. So maybe she thought then, oh, he was doing it because he loved me. He didn't want Sir Henry to be proposing to me. So maybe she did think there that he did love her. But she also could have been thinking that she might be, he might be, because he definitely knew. He had a suspicion that his wife was going to betray him. So she might be thinking that if she was spending so much time with Sir Henry, she might secretly like try to tell him off the plan. Yeah, but um, um, what Lily said saying that, um, <coughs> that she, she was selfish. Um. On here, on page 223, it, she says, is he safe? Has he escaped? This is after she was released from being whipped and tortured. She's putting her, her, herself behind Sir Henry and asking, is he okay? No, he's talking, oh yeah. Yeah, I just don't see how he, like, I just don't see how she could be selfish at one time and then not, yeah. Well, she will, she is, but let's hear from Ken. Yeah, actually, Ken. I think, That redirection. Somebody re, uh, directed our attention to Ken, and I'd like to give you the point. Chris. Back, Chris. Okay. Okay. Eddie. Eddie. Um, I don't really have anything to say. I think it was because she gave his spot away out of love. Because there's, she she wanted him. It was the best for him. Like, he gave it away out of her love. Like, well, like um, she's like... She's in love with who he used to be. She's not yeah. in love with him. Yeah. 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 I, I, I know, but she's, it's out of love that he's letting him be captured. Like, no. she, just, she doesn't want him, like, to be to be so bad. She wants him to, like, redirect his life. Like, no, really it good. says on page 241, he showed her for the first time that she had a rival in his love. Her fidelity turned in an instant to bitter hatred. She hated him with all of her soul and mind. He had beaten her, and he, she could have stood all of that if she knew that he still loved her. But when she knew that he didn't love her as he had, she hated him. And I honestly think after being treated like that, you lose your love for somebody. And you don't necessarily have to like hate them, but you just you you can't love a person who has treated you so badly. I think that she is sort of desperate for his love. So when he did do that, like said when he what, did become jealous, and that made her even not. When he did say, um, like when he was jealous of Sir Henry, then that really did make her want to sort of stay with Stapleton. Not, I can't really think, like. Like yeah. Um, I think that when she was with Sir Henry for a little bit, she kind of liked it because Sir Henry mentioned um, on page 125, um, I've only known her these few weeks, but from the first I just felt that she was made for me, and she too. She was happy when she was with me, and I'll swear. There's a light in a woman's eyes that speaks louder than words. Um, he really liked her, and I think liking her, she liked her husband, but she also kind of liked Sir Henry because he he genuinely loved her, and he wasn't like being abusive to her at all, and she liked that, she liked that kind of love. He was kind. He was, he was, he was kind to her, he wasn't mean at all. Yeah. It was respectful love on the contrary of um, Stapleton's love, which was disrespectful. Exactly. Um, let's take a slight pause here. Um, so, I think we're all agreeing that this is an abused woman yeah. who nevertheless has, cl has clung to hope that her husband still loves her, okay? 
Um, and that that hope is only shattered finally and completely when she realizes that he, she, he's been unfaithful. Yeah. Um, is there anyone who disagrees with that? No. Okay. So she endures even the beatings and, and the, the abuse because she's still clinging to this love. Okay. Does that love, and here's, we get to the point of our question, does that love, even if it's just a particle of love, even if she's beginning to see, because she experiences the love of another man who is kind, even if she's beginning to see that Stapleton's love is not, <laughs> not real love or not, um, she still hopes. Now, is that hope, does that hope that her husband still loves her or loves her in spite of everything, is that hope, does that hope justify her failure to go to the police? So we're sort of back to the bearing more Selden question. Does her fear of her husband justify her failure? Not to go to the police. Yeah, her from Andrew. No, Gabriel. Yeah, uh, Andrew. Andrew. Well, either either Andrew or Gabriel, whoever is ready to speak. Um, why don't you have something right now? Gabriel, give me a reason. Well, I feel um, that she should have gone to the police to to risk her own life for Sir Henry's, and um, just because someone is in your family, if they're you know doing all these bad things like planning to murder people and stuff. Just because they're in their family doesn't mean that you sh you should just uh, not report them to the authorities. It's kind of a moral obligation because other people could die. I know, but she would die. Like if she like if she was caught going to the police and telling them everything, like she's dead. Like so, yeah, but but think about how many people's lives she saved yeah, and, by doing that. And it says, yeah. greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. That's John chapter fifteen verse thirteen. Like um, like I said, you, if she she has to spare her life for it, like the countless lives that her husband might kill in the future. Uh -huh. it's like easy. it's one life versus like like so many that he's gonna. It's easy to say that, but I mean, if you were in that place, you'd be yeah. very scared at the thought of being confronted with death. So I mean, you can't really quite judge her because, and it's true she should have gone to the police and told them, but she feared for her life and and. I bet that anybody here would have been really, really scared to have that possibility. And uh, at that point, she still, she was still clinging on to like that little string she was holding on to that her husband still might have feelings for her. Uh, and if she did that, yeah. she might have thought that those feelings that he, that she thought he had for her, would be gone if she did that. But it's been ten years. Like, don't you think that's enough time for her to deal with the like aspect of her might, she might be losing her life, but. She's been like sitting around, like getting abused while her husband's been killing all these people. She mm -hmm. should be at that point knowing that she has to do what's right. Oh, Andrew, well, do you have anything to say? Mm -hmm. Andrew? Um, <coughs> I had a point, but I can't really tie it into this conversation. Christina should say something. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Like everybody's been saying, I really don't think she would tell because she loves me so much. There's just, like it said, like the quote Eliana said, I can endure it all as long as I still could still cling to the hope that I had as love. I mean, it's not right to conceal knowledge of a crime, but like her life is in danger. And though she should have tried to tell, I think that since her life was in danger, like anybody in that situation would try to keep and save their life? Well, um, is it on, on, page, okay. on page 240, it says that she did try to tell. It says she was ready to warn Sir, Sir Henry as far as she could without implicating her husband. And again and again, she tried to do so. It's saying that she like was trying to, but then something's stopping her from doing it. Yeah, the problem with that is she's putting, <coughs> once again, I said this before, she's putting her love for her husband or the hope that he loves her in front of Sir Henry's life. She's she's taking, she's pretty much, it's the same thing that the very Lord is doing here, harboring, she's not telling the whereabouts or not telling about the crimes of a person. Um, um, well, is it ever right to conceal knowledge of a crime? Like, 
No. No. Yeah. It's no. Not. We have a moral yeah. obligation to report yeah, any absolutely. crime or knowledge of a crime to the authorities. And okay, but if, if like, which means if you that were, if there, if someone, if there was a slave and, um, and you were like smuggling slaves to Canada, would you, um, <laughs> <laughs> or like, no, okay, say if there's like, a, like an oil, like a pipe, like a pipeline going down the hill, and there's like a water base down there, there's like a ton of water, like drinking water, and then there's a leak, and if you blow up, if someone blows up that the pipe up, um, far away from that before it leaks down here to get, um, and you but know that person. That you, oh, I know, I know, but I'm just comparing it to this. Um, Very specific. Yes. Um, okay, would you tell that person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, finish his analogy. Whether you like it or not, you can crit critique it afterwards. Would you, um, it's to save so many lives, like, yeah, I know everyone says, like, the ends don't justify the means, but, like, in that case, like, you think of all the lives you're saving, just, like, and you're not going to give that person away. But, but how is that case anything like but, the okay, case but also, like, I'm almost, like, it's almost right to save knowledge of a crime, not tell the police. Like, say someone, like, wanted to, would not perform an abortion, like, this person at this day of age could be considered a criminal, but you know that abortion is wrong, and you don't tell the police, that's not that's right even though you're technically committing a crime but then that's, what if it's you're a just crime? No, if you're concealing knowledge of something that this person did but what he did was good oh except if what is a crime in our country well, like exactly. yeah that's what i'm saying that he won't perform the abortion that's going to be considered like eventually mrs stapleton tried to tell um sir henry and watson and on page 235 it says Eventually, as we know, she adopted adopted the expedient of cutting out the words which would form the message and addressing the letter in a disguised <coughs> way. It reached the baronet and gave him the first warning of his danger. So she did want to warn him. And she she was I, I'm, I kind of think she was trying to do it tactfully so that she wouldn't get caught by her husband. But she was trying to do it. But then yeah. also she does it not so tactfully when she thinks that Watson is Sir Henry on page yeah. 98. She goes, yeah. she says, go back, go straight back to London instantly. I can, and then he says, why should I go back? And she says, I cannot explain. Can you not tell when a warning is for your own good? Go back to London, start tonight, get away from this place at all costs. And then suddenly she says, hush, my brother is coming. So she, but she mistakes Watson for Sir Henry. So she does try to warn him again. So, good, good uh, quote. So, does she do enough? No. 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 I think oh, she had the will to yeah. do it. To help. Over that, was but really let, let, let Ryan so, speak. But there was a, a small bit of her that uh, wanted her husband to uh, converge to, from not killing, uh, convert to not kill people, and she. She, she might have wanted to see if he would change after a while. Um, yeah, I, I, actually, like, I, I feel like we might be in agreement. I think we're in agreement. Wait, wait, wait. I think we might actually be in agreement. <coughs> who here, like, of raise of hands, who thinks that she, um, she did some things, but she could have done more? Who thinks that? I think that she she did a little bit of things, but she could have done more. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So interesting. So we have we have two or three people who disagree. So let's hear from them. Yeah. Um, she did actually try a lot more to stop her husband. Um, it says that on page two hundred and thirty-two, she flat out refused to help her husband with the death of Sir Charles. She would, um, she would not endeavor to entangle the old gentleman in a sentimental attachment, which might deliver him over to his enemy. But there was Threats, a and even, I am sorry to say, blows failed to move her. She would have nothing more to do with it, and for a time, save the was at a dead walk. Yes, but that wasn't until he had decided to kill someone. Before in the book, it said he had been implicated in many burglaries. If he was implicated in burglaries, she should have told about those crimes beforehand, too. There's crimes before these ones. These yeah, ones are just the last house. ones he did. What about the first ones he did? She, 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 she should have stopped him at the beginning of his crimes. Yeah, yeah, before it escalated. Yeah, before it escalated. She should have stopped it. <coughs> yeah, I agree with Maria. I think she was definitely trying to yeah. stop 
her husband, but she was kind of looking for an opportunity to the point where she couldn't, she wouldn't put herself in mortal danger. And there husband. probably wasn't as much fear there. Like she probably didn't. She, she probably, probably didn't, didn't think, think that. Her it was probably yeah. still yeah. abusing her oh. at that time. No, yeah. I mean, not as much Oops. probably. One at a time. I don't think Chris was finished. And when Chris is finished, um, let's see if, if, first of all, if Eddie um, would like to actually contribute to a new string of argument, and maybe Andrew. Um, <clears throat> I don't want go. I don't want you all to end up going around in circles again. Yeah. Most of yeah. most of you agreed that she did something and did put herself at risk to some degree. The question is, is did she do enough? Most of you think, do, do you think she did enough? Yeah. Eddie. <coughs> well, she did some things, like Emma said on page 98, where she thought Watson was screaming, <coughs> and then she warned Sir Henry with the letter. Mm -hmm. But I feel like she could have done more, like when... Like, as they were saying, when she was with Sir Henry alone and all mm -hmm. that, she could have warned him secretly when Sir Mr. Stapleton wasn't around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she could have told But I have a question. It has to do with fear. What if there was a criminal living in your house? Like, you just one day walk in the garage and you see him there lying in the corner or something. <laughs> That's scary. And, like, he threatened you. He said, don't tell anyone, otherwise I'm going to shoot you tonight. I mean, would you call the authorities? I think yes. that yes, I would, yes, because definitely. I would yeah. rather have myself be shot than other people. You and say that really time, easily, but if I'm you were really in that situation, let's hear from Sarah. would you really be brave enough to do that? Well, it depends no. how thick your yes. moral code is. I think you can see, you if you really done. want yeah. to. People, great. You're doing, you're doing really well, but we're getting into that sort of excited mode where we start overlapping each other. Um, Sarah asks, um, Ben asked a great question, great analogy. Sarah says, what? Would you really have the courage to yeah, do it? Yeah, would you really have the courage to okay. do it? Okay. Now, my, my, I want to hear from Ryan who wants to answer first, and then, Oops. yeah, then I might respond. Um, it depends how thick your little code is, because okay. you would, would you rather save yourself or save your entire family? And it, it really depends on that <laughs> aspect. Okay. The thing is, it's not a one-way street. There's not one way of getting rid of them. You don't have to sacrifice yourself. You can do other things. You can tie them up. You can. There's more than one way of there's fixing this problem. Like this like huge thing yeah, there. but they, if you're with them while they're sleeping, you can do so much to someone while they're sleeping. Like there's there's more than just one way than sacrificing yourself. Um, stopping uh, wait a minute. Yeah, I thought yeah, we were yeah. talking about the, the analogy of the criminal in the garage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and exactly. He's not gonna be, is he going to be sleeping in your presence? Well, <laughs> well, well, he said that he would kill you in your sleep. Okay. Right. If, he, if he threatened like, you. I mean, you can catch them off guard. You can do... I think she's well, just trying to point out that... Yeah, but this, can. Can. this has nothing to do with the thing we're talking about. Because Laura Lyons... I mean, not really nice. Miss Barry Wall. <laughs> she, um, she was no match for her husband physically, so she could not have just like. Yeah, but she's out. with him while she's he's sleeping. She's his wife. Like that, she's with him all the time. Like even a bigger person than me, I can still somehow catch them off guard and get them. Like hit them with the frying well, pan. It's, it's or harder well, to do that than you think. Well, you already hit him in the head. And then yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. Can, yeah. Okay. can we hear from Ken? Ken was trying to Well, get what I was going to say, I was, I was going to clear up what Eliana was saying. I was going to say there's many possibilities that there's a lot of ways that you could get out of that situation instead of just sacrificing yourself. Yeah, yeah. for other people. I think that's what she was just trying to say. Yeah. Also, Benny, like, the police, if he was really that dangerous of a criminal at this time, the police would probably be there, like, really quickly. Mm -hmm. If it was just, like, in a city or, like, a suburb, like, He's probably not going to be, if the police will probably catch him in time for him not to kill you that night. And if she had gone to the authorities, the most likely thing, if she reported that her husband had, was planning or had murdered these people, and if she was in fear of death, she could have been put in protective custody. So Mr. Stapleton yeah. could have even her. To be honest, yeah. going back to what Benny said about the criminal, if he would hold up a gun and say, your family's upstairs and you call the police or something, I'll shoot them right now, 
I don't think, I know that, I don't think that anybody here would want to put their families at risk because we all love our families very much. And I don't, I couldn't imagine losing mine. And to be honest, and I, I know it's a bit selfish, but I wouldn't complete just clearly, oh, you know what, I'm going to call the police and like make up that decision in that second because I don't, I, I don't think it's an easy decision. Yeah, you have to think about another way of getting out of it. Like yeah. automatically when I'm proposed with the problem, I have to think of multiple options, not a single one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, for example, in uh, Maria's situation, you don't have to openly call the police. You could text uh, one of your friends if you can't text the phone or what you don't have a phone, though. <laughs> They'll probably just have like a house. Pigeon and note. But they don't want you texting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose we could bring it back to the topic this way. Um, Laura Lyons, sorry, <laughs> Mrs. Stapleton, Beryl, isn't, there, there's a problem with the analogy. She doesn't have uh, a few seconds to make. Yeah, decision. she has 10 years, and he trusts yeah. her. Um, he trusts he trust her, her, trust yeah. her until he refuses. It says yeah. he stopped trusting her as soon as she refused to um, tie, she refused to lay a trap for Sir Henry. Yeah. So he trusted her until that point. He trusted her. He, he thought she would never do that until that point. Point, which means she had a perfect chance to do a whole bunch of things to stop what he was doing, but she didn't. And that would make Mr. Not. Stapleton vulnerable uh, because he mm -hmm. trusts her the entire mm -hmm. time, so she could call the police during any time of that. Mm -hmm. in that instance. So we also don't know that back. maybe he didn't abuse her <coughs> until that point where yeah. she yeah. 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 Maybe he just said There's nothing in the book that implies she he yeah. abused her before that point. Yeah. You know, that's kind of I don't know about that. I think we're in all agreement though that she could have done everything, so why don't we keep going yeah. on this continuous loop of we talk for five minutes well, and then we the question is. Yeah, but then if we already have an agreement that she could have done more then but there's still a disagreement, though. I think some of okay. us still think so, that. So, and what, let's clarify, because Phil's right, it does seem to be kind of looping around a little bit. What is the disagreement? Yeah. Where does it lie? It's all right. Against? We don't all, remember, we don't all have to agree. Um, but we, it's good to be clear on where the disagreement lies. Yeah, what do you disagree on? That's what I would like to know. Um, I disagree on the point that she didn't do enough. I think considering the times when women weren't that daring and all out there, men were higher than women, she did all that a woman of that day could do. I don't and also I agree with Sarah, if she did if she did go to the police, Mr. Stapleton would have realized she's missing and he doesn't trust her. And so he's like, he oh, does she, he, she, but she, she trusted it. Eliana. If she went when Sir Hen when he was in the trash with Sir Henry, at that point he already didn't trust her and he's like She's gone. I don't trust her. She's probably going to the police. He probably would have fled and like gone to Griffin Meyer and probably. But what well, text do you have to support that? Chris was not dumb. That was dumb. It also. It I also agree with the that he was Mr. Stapleton was a genius, almost to match Holmes, and he probably would not have gone to gone to South America, married married her, and then come back if it was not for some for like his benefit or something. Yeah. Not have given her complete freedom. He knows he's not going to just like let it go out into the world with the knowledge that he is a criminal. Yeah. He went to just done yes, but it says he had nothing to fear from her because she was under his influence. Oh, it says that. Like if if, if she was, he thinks she's under well, his influence. She's she fine. She has nothing to. He has nothing <coughs> to worry about from well, her. That's what he believes, and it was true. She he didn't have anything to. Be, worry from her because she thought he loved her. Let's hear from Ken. From just a sec. I want to make sure the quiet people get in. Ken had a response and who else, Andrew? Gianna. Okay, let's see. let's hear from Ken first and then Gianna. Eliana said that um, Mr. Stapleton didn't have anything to worry about. Somebody else this morning, forgot who it was, but they pointed out that um, he did fear that she would lose influence over her if she left his side. Yeah. So that she that was after 
she refused to lay the track though. It wasn't before. And there's crimes that happened before that. Um, on page 235, um, he dared not leave for long out of his sight for fear he should lose her, his influence over her. He, he knows that if she, he doesn't keep her close by, she could and she probably would turn her, turn against him because of the beating and the knowledge that he wants to kill more people. Yes, but once again, that's after she refuses to lay the track. All of these quotes that you've been quoting are after that point. We haven't yeah. heard from Eddie or Andrew in a while. Even if she did, even if he did leave her side, he still had her, his butler Anthony to watch her. Yeah, it says, yeah, it says that he was an accomplice with uh, Mr. Stapleton. They're, they're really in the, in the part where Holmes is telling Watson all about the case. So. I don't think a but man with that temperament would be really, really wonderful the first year or the time for their first first years of their marriage and then all of a sudden turn into this horrible person. Uh, Eliana said that we have no proof that he beat her up and did that to her before and that's true but I don't I don't feel like a man with that temperament could have been completely wonderful all the time and it says in the Bible yes but no man let finish. Finish. Proverbs 4 6 do not forsake her and she will keep you love her and she will guard you so if Mrs. Stapleton had been mistreated before, she wasn't going, she wasn't going to have, you know, she, she wasn't going to want to protect her husband. I mean, um, man. It, um, it, it appears that our class time is about over. I don't think so. I just, yeah, I just, I heard I just don't, okay. I, about to I just don't know ahead, how Phil. you would say that, like, she, he would be so nice. Think of an abusive, like, husband. They don't start off, of, yeah, like what Ryan said, they don't, they're not abusive. If you're abusive, you're not going to want to marry them. They put on a cover. They wait. You get married. He probably already had thought of this plan for a while. Yeah. He just needed someone to help him. They even call him devilishly cunning. Like, yeah. he's, he's sneaky. He's tricky. He would be smart enough to think ahead and, like, plan this all out. Yeah, um, yeah he, he's sly. He, but you can't expect that everything. everything. You don't know what someone's going to do. And you can't know everything that's going to happen. Yeah, right. There are no previous future. quotes that show that Beryl was alone, other than that one with Sir Henry. Like, we don't know. Maybe he did, was with her, like, all the time, you know? Yeah. Or, like, kept her watched. Kept her imprisoned in the room while he, while he did his Yeah, excursion. but that was after. I'm very so sorry. Um, after she was Sorry. Sorry, uh, a class period is over. Um.